Okay, okay. great. Okay, so we're, we're live. This is a, a special meeting of the Board of Health. We're meeting on April 29th with a, a special agenda. And tonight we're just gonna do everything very much by the book. Um, we have a guest, Mary David, and also Cliff Reed is here. Um, and uh, we, uh, we should introduce ourselves. I'm Catherine Hilton and I'm the clerk. Hi, I'm Noreen Pease, I'm the chair. I'm Arlene Reed, a member of the board. Uh, Garrett Simonson, also a member of the board. And I'm Al Werner, also on the board for another few weeks. <clears throat> right, until until June 30th. Today. We're not letting you, no, it go, I think it goes all the way to June 30th for the for boards. Oh, good. Yeah, we'll get you for a few more days. <laughs> We're not letting you out of a of single one. Out of a single one. So, so we've got a special um, uh, brief for tonight, but I have a few things on, uh, on my agenda that I would like to get out of the way very quickly. I, would, I think it would be very useful for us to approve the minutes of the April 21st meeting, since that meeting is the one that's in question so that we can get them out there. Um, I trust that everybody got a chance to look at the minutes, and um, I think that we should have an actual vote, right? We never, oh. we don't usually vote on things, but let's let's vote um, uh, alphabetically. That will be Noreen. Uh, I move we accept the minutes, and I somebody else might want to second it quickly. I'll second it. Uh, and yes. Okay, Arlene. Uh, yes. Uh, Garrett. Yes. Al. Yes. And me. That makes it unanimous. So I'll send those out to Grace uh, so that they'll get up on the website tomorrow or they'll be available tomorrow. Um, another thing. Do we want to have an article in the newsletter that's coming out for um, for annual town meeting? That's something maybe to be thought about and suggested later. However, it's due May 7th, so we, we have to move quickly. I'm wondering if we should uh, remind people about the Mosquito District in that article, perhaps, Kat? That's one idea. Did you have an idea for an article? I didn't. Okay, so the Mosquito District, I can't remember the name of that. Okay, that's a possibility. And maybe we can, maybe we can promote vaccination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since it seems to be remind people of tick season while we're talking about mosquitoes, any sort of insect born okay. illness. Right. Um, is this the time or the place to uh, talk about town meeting and, and how things will be, or is that not something that we need to weigh in on? I wonder if Paul Lyons might do that. Mm -hmm. Let's, uh, let's, let's find out and coordinate with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'll. Uh, well, I'm not sure when it comes out, but I get. I think all of these things would be timely, so maybe we can just have several little board of health snippets. So, we have. In case you didn't realize this, we have another candidate for for the board of health, uh, and it's Mary David who is here, and so she's going to find out the awful truth tonight about what the board of health is really like. <laughs> Um, and there's one more thing that I forgot to put on the agenda that I sent out to you. Arlene, can you give us an update on the meeting with the school people? Today's meeting? Yeah. Yes, I can. So I met with school principal, Shutesbury Elementary School principal, Jackie Mendonca and school nurse, Katie Harrington and supervisory union 28 superintendent, Jen, Hag uh, Jen Culkeen. And uh, I, this was part of uh, an agreement that we as a board have with the school that at any time that there are five cases of COVID in Shutesbury over a two week period that we will meet within 24 hours so that we can discuss and assess any risk to the school community and, so that they can make any adjustments that they see necessary to the um, the uh, learning 
um, type, the type of learning, whether it be uh -huh. in-person, hybrid, or remote. And um, in fact, we reached that five-person uh, threshold recently, so I had let them know. Um, so we met, but, um, oh, and this is part of the agreement with their teachers union as well. The teachers want to know that we will be in close touch very soon after we reach any such threshold. So I let them know that the five cases are all older adults. They're all actually within between the ages of 60 and 90. And they all can be traced to one unfortunate gathering at a private home. Um, and uh, no, but none of the involved households has any relationship to the elementary school. So my assessment was that there really is no increased risk to the school community. And the, Jackie said, you know, at this point, the only thing that really would change their learning mode and to pull back to hybrid or remote would be an uh, evidence of a known transmission in the school and not just uh, numbers of cases in town. So they appreciated the information, but it, it does not affect the school protocols right now. Great. So, so Becky was asking me, she had seen, um, she, I guess she was copied in on your communication with the school the people case, and, and she, yeah. And she wondered about there was something about two people who were vaccinated. Yes, so well, two of them are so-called breakthrough cases. Oh dear. They're fully vaccinated, plus two weeks beyond their final dose of the vaccine, and yet were exposed and contracted the um, disease. And did and they get very sick or a little sick? One of them sick enough to be hospitalized, yes. Wow. wow. That's discouraging. Yeah. It is. The other much more mild. Huh. So so mild, in fact, that they did not seek testing till further along. Uh -huh. um, so I only received information about the infection late in the course. Wow. Well, yikes. Yeah. I don't know. And, and, and in my work with Amherst, by the way, I have another case of a breakthrough infection who was hospitalized with severe mm -hmm. um i don't think it matters but uh, was the gathering in shootsbury or was yes. it outside it was yes it's an indoor gathering arlene yes okay hi wim you're muted wim Hello. There you go. Hello. Hi. Hi, Wim. Hi, Wim. Um, you may not know Mary David, who is also here um, taking part in our discussion tonight. And she's uh, also a candidate for the Board of Health. So just wanted to update you. As am I. As is Arlene. Correct. What's, what's making that horrible sound? What's making that horrible sound? Is it me? Sounds like interference from something. Yeah, I think it might be, I think it's coming from Wim's audio. I'll turn off the audio. Okay. Much so, better. Yeah. So I was wondering if we should add vaccination data, the data that we get from the DPH weekly report to our weekly report. Any objection to doing that? People have asked for it. Okay. Yeah, I like I like that idea. Yeah, no yeah. objection. Okay, great. I will I will do it. So that's all the petty matters, and now, and now for the big show. Um, uh, Noreen, do you want to kind of orient us here? I will, and if you'll bear with me, I jotted down a, a few notes about it so I would cover everything. And Great. I think uh, just so we all know, the purpose of this part of our meeting tonight is to address uh, open meetings law complaint that was filed by Michael Hootstein on April 26, uh, 21. And the Board of Health has 14 days from April 26th to respond in writing to the Division of Open Government 
which is in the office of the Attorney General located in Boston. And um, my count indicates that our response must be mailed by May 14th. Uh, and given that we're be beginning to talk about this tonight, um, we should uh, clearly have our response drafted and sent well in advance of the deadline. So once members of the board agree to the contents of a response to the complaint, a letter is then signed by the board chair and forwarded to the Division of Open Government, which is again is a part of the Office of the Attorney General. Uh, a copy of this board's response is also forwarded to Mr. Hootstein, and Mr. Hootstein has a designated time frame to reply to the board's response and choose to proceed or not to proceed further with the complaint process. So, um, Kat, I'm going to suggest, and um, we can certainly discuss this, but I'm going to suggest we begin by reading each one of the four areas of the complaint, perhaps into the record or either uh, an abbreviated part into the record. Uh, for example, we would begin with complaint number one, and then uh, following hearing complaint number one, we would discuss the board's response to it. And then next we would discuss or read into the record complaint number two, and then respond to it proceeding through all the complaints until we get a sense of our overall response. So I would ask if there are any questions or um, if there are any other suggestions for how we might proceed. Arlene? Um, I would just like to make a statement. And before we read and discuss, um, in two, of the five open meeting law violations alleged by Mr. Hootstein. He references property of which I am part owner as a source of hazardous waste contamination. I stand ready to recuse myself from tonight's discussion, deliberations and actions. If a conflict of interest is perceived by myself or by anyone in attendance at this meeting. If I do recuse myself, I will leave the virtual meeting and would return if some one of you would send me a message to say that I should do so. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Is, um, that's an that's an interesting question. Maybe when we get there, we'll have we'll feel more clarity yeah. about that. Okay. Um, it seems to me that that to kind of pick up where Noreen left off that we can work through these, these um, points and decide the substance of how we are going to respond to them. But whether, rather than turn this into a sort of um, um, online writing working group, I suggest that I would then take your, all these suggestions back, draft a letter, which is, the letter is meant to be addressed to Michael Hoopstein um, and bring that back to our May 5th meeting for your final review and uh, I hope approval, which gives us still plenty of time to, to um, submit everything in the, in the at the appropriate time. I have a question. Oh. Please. Um, uh, can, uh, we get into this deliberation sort of issue. At some point, we need to 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 hash out or talk out uh, some of the details, and mm -hmm. um, or or can we just simply respond individually to you with our suggestions and avoid the deliberation aspect? We need to deliberate on it in public here. But then do we also deliberate the draft that gets created um, and gets sort of um, uh, worked on? I am hoping that we will be specific enough tonight that when I bring a, a draft back to you on May 5th, that it will require only minor adjustments. Okay. Right, so I'm just trying to I'm just trying to limit the amount of work time that we have to spend together yeah. on this. Wow, well, uh, and, and now I wanted to say I had some, you know, I wondered there may be people who want to listen to this video at a later point, and so I thought it might be, you know, 
they have not had the opportunity to see the complaint. Therefore, I thought we much should at least inform uh, whoever might want to listen to the, these proceedings, um, you know, what is in the complaint by either reading the, the uh, uh, you know, each complaint item or uh, having it summarized and reading the gist so that people understand, you know, sor sort of more broadly what the concerns presented by Mr. Hustin have been. Well, I, I, I think that that is a courtesy and I, and I have in my notes sort of um, made a, um, a brief um, resume of each one of these of yeah. these points. I just want to point out that the, com the complaint itself is a public record. Yeah. And okay. so anybody can request it. I don't okay. know if they have to, re well, they don't, when you make a public records request, it goes through the town clerk. So they can, they can um, contact Grace and ask for it if, if they want to see it. Yeah. Given that, Kat, I'm, I'm, I'm um, happy with the summary that you, that uh, you might have formulated. Okay. Okay. Um, I just want to remind us all, well, of a couple things. One, we should be behaving as if we were sitting in an auditorium full of people, something I can no longer even imagine. Um, and two, this is an open meeting law complaint. There, I think there are some, some points that are beyond the scope of the open meeting law and we wanna to try to keep to um, what this complaint is technically about. So if you're ready, I will walk you through it. So, so the, first, the first point alleges that the Board of Health deliberated outside of a posted meeting via email to deny public access to the reasoning behind their construction of a PFAS contaminated map, contamination map and related testing plan. It seems to me, I'll start out because I've, I've been thinking about it and I know you have too. It seems to me that this is incorrect on a number of points. Um, we did not deliberate to construct a PFAS contamination map. Um, that PFAS contamination map was presented to us by, uh, by DEP. Um, it is true that we added, th we added things on their invitation when they said, do you know of anything else? Al had the foresight to get in touch with Walter Tibbetts and ask about foam and he found out that foam had been used back in the day when it was full of PFAS down on Pratt Corner Road. Um, and we mentioned lot 032 because, you know, just because that comes up every time there's any talk of where, any kind of contamination. Where is, where is 032? Oh, it's the, it's the, um, it's, you know, it's across from the highway department. The, okay. That the lot where Got the it. library didn't go. Understood. Yep. Okay. Thanks for asking. Um, so the one thing about this that is somewhat true is that we had this meeting with DEP and we did not post it. And we didn't post it because I didn't know that we had to post a meeting. If you have, as it turns out, if you have two members of a committee or board and they meet with a third party, even though it's not a quorum of the board, that meeting has to be posted as a public mm. meeting. Um, mm. We, didn't, we didn't know this. Um, I th but the substance of this, um, that we ourselves were developing a map and mm -hmm. denied the public access to that just isn't true because we didn't develop the map, mm -hmm. right? The, the three points of interest, Jenison Road, Lady Slipper Lane and the fire department were um, already on the map that was created by DEP. And when we realized that this was, that there were questions about this, we disseminated the information that I just described to the entire town or to the entire uh, town on the, um, the town announced list serve. 
Are there more things that we would like to say about this? Yeah, the, the term deliberated, um, we didn't deliberate, we, we discussed, um, we were asked to be part of this meeting um, and they were asked, they asked us if there were other sites that might be considered. And to be right. fair, Pat, um, I, I think I was always going to meet with them and I think that you were sort of like, if you could make it, you would you would make it. So it, it, it wasn't right. a deliberate sort of, we're gonna have two people on the Board of Health meet um, to do this. Um, so. Right, it was kind of a last minute thing. And the reason that I joined is so that I would have some information in case I had to do any kind of communication as I did or administration, because I didn't know anything about it. But I expected it to be a, basically a presentation. I didn't think there was gonna be any input from us. Um, now, this point about we weren't deliberating, we were discussing, it seems to me that in the open meeting law, deliberation is very, very broadly conceived, basically to mean discussion. I mean, we can't hardly talk about anything by email. And uh, so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have to just get with the program on that. Right, so in a sense, we deliberated with them in the sense that we discussed it and, and a decision was made, but not by us really, right? We gave them information and they, and they incorporated it into what they were doing. And, and Kat, this was a presentation that other boards of health were at? No, no, they, um, they were having meetings with different boards of health, but one at a time, so that they could show them the map, as it turns out. Um, we weren't really well informed about what this meeting was gonna be. Okay. Um, I thought it was just gonna be an informational presentation and we would learn about PFAS and what the testing plan was. But no, they came in with a map with these three sites marked on it and um, said, said, is there anything you think we should add? And so you added the O32, the knowledge of the O32 lot, but yeah. no others, correct? Also the yeah. Pratt Corner Road. Yeah. Pratt Corner Road, okay. Right, and, and that Pratt Corner Road thing was way back decades ago, I don't know, maybe the 70s or 80s, there were a bunch of car fires where people would steal cars and drive them up, I think oh, by yeah, the, the, um, yeah. the highway or the, um, the power, um, right of way and set them on fire. Who knew? And uh, and and that happened repeatedly. And they were hot fires, and they needed to have the foam. So we told them about that. But that was that was it. So this first allegation in the complaint is um, complicated. There are many sub parts of this first allegation. Um, there's denial of public access to the meeting. There's the, and the construction of the PFAS contamination map. There's also mention of um, the, that PFAS map suspiciously failing to identify all but one of the many known toxic properties owned by the town, suggesting a cover-up to conceal responsible party obligations under, and then he quotes 310 CMR, et cetera, the Superfund contingency plan. So it's a very complicated allegation with more than one subpart, I think. Well, that that is true, but it seemed to me that, and maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong in this. It seemed to me that. Um, um, as far as an open meeting law mm -hmm. complaint mm -hmm. that if we, if we, I mean, the, okay. the point here is we failed 
to have an open public meeting and we did certain things. Okay. But it seems to me that if we didn't do those things, then we can't have violated the open meeting law by in doing them because we didn't do them. I That's kind of my, I follow, my reasoning I follow here. You. Yeah, believe it or not, yeah. I follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> I don't even follow it. Yeah. Okay. So, but it does all boil down to um, uh, sort of substance behind the allegation that we violated the open meeting law. Um, okay. So do you feel that there is more, um, more that should be said in response to this, um, this section? Oh, that's not it. I, I guess I wanna make one more point and, and that is to say that um, I don't think the, D the DEP and the UMass researchers would have been amenable to having it be an open meeting um, because they, they explicitly told us that you know, they are in the planning phases and that it was not something that was ready to be shared. And, and there are, there's a lot of reasons to, um, to not share um, that map because then it brings all sorts of questions like, oh my goodness, there's a dot on my house and I haven't been contacted. They're gonna, con they're gonna take wa a water sample. Um, and so um, I, I don't know that they would have agreed uh, for it to be an open meeting, even if we had required it. I, I, I don't know how that would have gone. I don't either and I guess we'll never know, um, but it seems to me that they don't, that they have to follow the open meeting law too. And if the open meeting law says you have to have your open meeting in public, then they would have either have to do it or kick me out and just talk to you. I mean, they could have done that too. I suppose, yeah. But, okay, but we just didn't know. I'm trying oh. to, find, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to say for the record is my understanding of the, the meeting that you uh, had with them was to identify any potential um, additional sites that they should potentially consider. And that would, from my point of view, only benefit the town if you were aware of sites that they hadn't identified and uh, might be useful to, uh, to test in some way. Yeah. We didn't actually know what the substance of the meeting was going to be, right? Right. If we if we had known that we were going to be asked to give input, I don't I don't think we knew that. Although maybe we did because there was the question about the fire, the the PFAS. In any case, we just didn't know what um, what the requirements were, and that's just you know. Ignorance of the law is no excuse, but it's, it, it is at least an explanation. So it seems to me the question that's still at hand is, have we thought through thoroughly uh, everything with regard to this complaint that could be considered uh, open meetings law violation? Well, I, that's what we're trying to do. Exactly, that's why I was just summarizing it. Right. Um, So if we didn't put the farm dump on private property as a source of PFAS contamination, if we didn't do that, um, it seems to me that that is, that is irrelevant. So you're speaking about- I'm reading number spot. one here. Right, you're speaking about the hot spot located at the intersection of Old Wendell Road and Locks Pond Road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, we did not put that remember. there. That was DEP that put those pink dots on the Yes. Map, correct? Yes, right. And mm -hmm. if you remember, Kat, we, we were a bit surprised. We were like, well, what's, what's that? <laughs> yeah, right. What is, what, you know, I, I had yeah. no idea that was there. No, so. me neither. Nor the other one that they had on Jenison Road. Right. 
No. And did they divulge the information that led them to put those dots in that? They room? said there were there were at one time dumps there. That's all they said. Yeah, they they knew they knew about them, and so it's kind of like okay, all right? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty surprising. Um, so there, you're right, Arlene. There, if you look at the actual the actual complaint here, there are a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. um, in, for example, the PFAS map suspiciously fails to identify all but one of the many known pro toxic properties owned by the town. Now, I don't know any known toxic properties right. owned by the town except yeah. the fire station, and that was already on the list. Right. I mean, um, and the pre and and the preceding the preceding sentence. It is common knowledge that the mm. Peach common knowledge is another word for hearsay. I'm sorry. Yeah, underlying the uh, town officials' properties has long been identified as a more likely source of historic DDT and PFAS contamination. And no, I I don't know what backs that up. No, I don't yeah, that is, it's hearsay. Up. It's hearsay. And by the way, this is not a DDT testing program. And that's, 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 that's nothing to do with it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that we're simultaneously being accused of um, not, not putting the peach orchard on the list for the benefit of one of our, our board members, and also putting the other site on the list for the benefit of one of our board members. Um, but of course, we didn't put anything on the site or on the, you know, on that particular part. So it seems to me to be, I mean, we can kind of go around and round and round about it. But as far as open meeting law, we did not do these things. And as far as it being a known PFAS contaminated site, um, we really, mm, that's, uh, that's not it, known. Yeah, well, we didn't we didn't really get concerned about PFAS, uh, you know, until about I don't know eight ten years ago, right? When we started realizing that we were messing things up, right? So, I, so yeah, my question there was, what's the evidence for this? Right. right. Where's right. the study that shows this? Right. Yeah, we don't have we don't have any data there. That's just that's just a, a little bit far fetched. Um, but for the point, for the, the purpose of responding to this as um, an open meeting law complaint, I think basically the answer is we didn't do these things, therefore we didn't violate the open meeting law, except to the extent that we participated in the meeting, which I, I have later on in my, my notes about that. All right, I don't think we want to go into the whole business of hearsay and and um, conflict of interest and all that stuff because we didn't do that, right? If we had done it, we would have to to um, to answer those. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Are we done with point number one? Should we go on, or is there more to say? Yeah, I think if we're not going to take issue with all of the the other little things that were brought up, but I think we're done. I don't think we should because yeah, we'd no, be going I, down a rabbit hole. Yeah, I, I agree. Right. And, and you know, we have to send this to the attorney general's office and I can imagine what right. they would say, right. you know, if we started getting into all this, we, we need to kind of keep to the point of, of what this thing is. Okay, so now, in number two, the Board of Health failed to provide the public notice of its April 22nd, 2021 meeting and failed to state its sole reason for going into executive session, which it did with the intent to silence the complainant by threatening to subject him to public scorn and humiliation. Now, one, we did not have a meeting on April 22nd. We did not go into executive session. Unless, right. Kat, he is calling the email thread a meeting. Well, I was just about to say, one email to which no one responded is not a meeting. Right. 
And it's certainly not executive session. But there was an email thread among several of us on the 22nd. And I have printed them out. So the subject line was, thanks for your phone message. And there were, it began on the 21st, but it continued into the 22nd. Was that, Arlene, was that initially uh, between you and Hold on Mr. A second. Bernstein, and then it seemed like Kat got added and then the rest of us got added and then that's when I responded? Hold on a second. Um, I have these emails printed out and numbered. And the first one that occurred on the 22nd, seven, most of them were on the 21st. Uh, but uh, Alice uh, was the first one on the 22nd. No, it was actually from Michael to my, by my, I, oh no, you're right, you're right. Um, Al's, uh, of the 22nd at 7.45 a.m. Um, was the, uh, the first one on that date. And um, there were several more that followed on the same day. So he okay. may be referring to the sequence of emails on the 22nd that started with Al's at, um, at 7.45 a.m. I, I don't know. I mean, okay. I'm not trying to speak for him, but it, he may be calling that an executive session or calling that a meeting, which I guess technically it is, you know, if there is a conversation going on among us. And Arlene, just for clarification, were all of us on that email thread on the 22nd? Because um, I don't, I don't believe I received anything. I think you're right. Um, the way that I have printed it printed out, the whole recipient list is not included. So I think it's true that you were not, it is Al, um, addressing me and Kat And I think Michael was CC'd on that or included. I don't right. know. I can go back into my email and read the whole recipient list, but. I think that's correct, Arlene. Yeah. I think so too. I'm trying to find it here. It was um, April 22nd, 7.45 AM. Yeah, I've got it. Um, to the Board of Health email address. Well, yeah, actually there was quite a bit more, more stuff that I didn't realize. So, so Al sent a meeting that it seems to have gone to me, to Michael and to, what's this, Becky. And to, okay, when it says me, that means the Board of Health. To the Board of Health, Michael and Becky. And um, then there's a message from Michael in return, I think, at, um, uh, at 919, addressing Al, the Board of Health, and Becky. And then Al responds, and they get into a pissing contest. And... Um, And the 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 um, the list is Al, Michael, the Board of Health email, and Becky. So that is not executive session. No. Right? And that is right. not really even discussion. It's not even a quorum. It is. It is me sort of spouting off my frustration. 
Right. Mm -hmm. And don't you, if you go, don't you have to deliberately go into executive session? Isn't that a, like a thing you have to declare? Yeah. That when you're in a formal meeting? Yeah, you have to take special votes for it. It's very, it's very detailed and, and uh, explain what, which of the 10 possible reasons you're doing it for. So, I mean, he's kind of playing fast and loose. I think what he probably means is something like a rump session where you don't have a quorum. Um, we didn't have anything like a quorum on this discussion. It's basically a uh, Board of Health email, Al and Michael, and Becky was copied into all of them. Yeah, and not only that, but he um, goes on to state what our intent, not only that we went into executive session, but what our intent in doing so was. He says, uh, failed to state its sole reason for going into executive session which it did with the intent to silence the complainant and so forth. Right. Um, okay, so the idea that there was a meeting um, is just an, an impossible thing because we didn't, not everyone was included and even most were not included. And, and Michael was included. Right. Very confusing. Right. So it seems to me that we we must argue that it was not a meeting. It was discussion that included a board of health member, which is probably incorrect, but we certainly can't say that the Board of Health was meeting. And we especially can't say that the Board of Health was meeting in the executive session. And we certainly are not willing to say that we were trying to silence him by threatening to subject him to public scorn and humiliation, which as far as I can tell, has no, no basis in reality. Mm -hmm. He wasn't threatened in any way. Yeah. I agree. And, and it was an email correspondence that, um, that I guess Arlene started in response to a phone call that mm -hmm. uh, to, right. yep. to Arlene. Right, he had left me a voicemail at my home phone number um, that I have not saved, sorry, but it referenced the, um, as my recall of it, is that he was concerned about this PFAS map. And um, the Board of Health's uh, need to share its, uh, how it arrived, how it developed that map, essentially. And I sent him a message on, I have it right here on April 21st. I sent him a message in the late afternoon, thanks for your phone message was the title of my email. I sent it from the Board of Health email address. You all could read it, but I said, I received your recent voicemail. Thanks for wanting to involve yourself positively. He wanted to know what can I do to um, be involved with this effort to test for PFAS. And I said, at our meeting tonight, because we did have a meeting on April 21st, at our meeting tonight, I'm going to convey this to other members of the Board of Health who are more involved with water testing issues than I. Um, in translation, I was gonna ask somebody who'd been at the DEP meeting to get back to him. Um, and that we'd get back to him soon. Um, so I did not, that was not the one where I addressed the authorship of that map. I did that in a later email uh, when he continued to press in later correspondence, he continued to press for tell me how you arrived at these hotspots. And um, so the next day I sent him an email that said, we did not compile that map, nor have we identified hotspots that map was created by DEP. And then I gave him information about how to contact DEP for more. And um, 
that did not placate him, I guess. And, and despite that, Mr. Hutstein um, still argues in the complaint that in fact it was our map and that we did make this map. I know. Right. Yeah. Well, somewhere in that email thread, he says that's not what DEP says. So right. it, there may be some um, miscommunication about, I mean, they may have said, oh no, we had input from the Shrewsbury Board of Health and they did, we added those two things. And that's yeah. why we talked about that at the meeting that I would then send out um, with our second message, I would explain more about how the map was developed and what the trouble spots were. Mm -hmm. I think that when we talked to DEP, we were imagining that so many people would sign up that they would just pick and choose the, the houses in the, in the places where they were interested, but that didn't happen, right? So when we went to put out a second message saying, hey, this is out there, you can do it. We wanted to give more information, especially for the people in the areas of interest. However, I can see that if he contacted DEP and said, I'm told that you've completely made up this map with no input from Shrewsbury Board of Health, and they said, no, that's not true, that um, that would look, that could look suspicious. Okay. Or at least, yeah, at I least did, problematic. Yeah, I did not know that you had at least some input into that map. Yeah, right. Clearly, clearly, we didn't can we didn't uh, communicate all the aspects of this, but we didn't realize it was going to be important. You know, mm -hmm. because really, you know, because it's not our program, right? We just mm -hmm. didn't care that much. So I think what we need to say here is that the, the correspondence that took place after the meeting probably should not have taken place. Nevertheless, there was only one board of health member in it. Am I correct on that, Arlene? Well, Al was in it, I was in it, the board of health was in it. On the 22nd? I think so. I mean, I, I have it, and it was all. Well, I think I will see it on your it. email, Arlene. I think you well, see it, everyone. I've, I'm looking at the Board of Health email, and the, the, um, the emails that were written on April 22nd are among Al, Michael, Becky, or Becky's copied, she doesn't participate, and the Board of Health email. Those are the right. only those are the only addresses that are on these emails. But isn't the Board of Health email all of us? Well, it is in a way, but since not everybody uses it, it's not like we were all participating in it. The Board of Health email is is basically I use it for Board of Health business and so do you. Right, but we all could access it. It's true we could. Okay. But there was no deliberation. There no was no discussion. Um, well, you know, after, is after that true? My response. Well, but you, I think that your response is discussion. And that's, weirdly enough, I think that that counts as deliberation. Both you sent him two emails, right? Or maybe more once you got around to the apology part. Um, and I just don't know. This is really complex. So just, so just trying to to think what what should have happened. So uh, Arlene should not have had any sort of email correspondence with him and should have said, uh, Mr. Hutstein, you need to attend the next Board of Health meeting. Uh, is that the only way to proceed with these sorts of um, requests and, and comments? No, I don't think it is. It's what's the what's problematic here is not having not having um 
um, back and forth. I mean, having communication for any one of us to communicate with a person outside the board of health is fine. Um, it's back and forth among the board members. That's a problem. Now, I want to come back to this thing that we were just saying. The, the board of health email receives these emails, but the, doesn't send any. The only sender from the board of health on April 22nd, Al, was you. Mm -hmm. Right? So no other board members wrote anything. Well, one thing did happen, and, and that is that when I composed my response to Michael, my response to the voicemail he had left at my home phone number, uh -huh. I did from my personal email alert you all to that, to the fact that I had composed a reply to him and sent it from Board of Health email. Uh -huh. So I alerted you all to that and somebody said, I think it was you, Kat, said thanks. And that was the extent of that. But so uh -huh. I, I did chime in from my personal email that that had happened. And that was strictly informational. Yeah, just to let you know that there, yeah, if which, any of you wanted to read my response, you could go there and do something. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that that is, that that is um, uh, permissible to just give information. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm seeing on the Board of Health email is that there was no, send, nothing sent from the Board of Health, only to the Board of Health, except for Al on his personal email. Mm -hmm. So I'm still arguing that there was no meeting. Okay. Um, right. Is there more we want to say about this item? No. Okay. So, so point number three claims that the Board of Health denied public access to a public meeting about water contamination issues. The Board of Health did not have a public meeting on water contamination issues and could not possibly have denied public access to it, mm -hmm. to the non-meeting. Um, do you suppose, Arlene, he's thinking about the meeting in your neighborhood where it came he up? Might, he might very well. So that meeting was an April 11th meeting. Hmm. Um, it is a, well, you, do you say semi-annual or biannual when it's twice a year? But anyway, it's a twice a semi year, semi-annual hmm. um, meeting of our homeowners association. And at that meeting, I brought up the PFAS testing program to my neighbors. And I spoke in support of it in case they received you know, the card that invited people to participate. And so um, we had a brief discussion about it. And then later, because some people were in my neighborhood were looking for more information, I accessed and shared that DEP map, not knowing that there had been any sentiment expressed by DEP to not distribute it widely. I should have asked you what you wanted it for when you yeah. when you asked for it. Because I did. I said, I said, how do I, you know, how do I get hold of that map? You shared it with us, but I can't find it. And you gave me a copy. I didn't know that it shouldn't be shared. And so I sent it along to uh, my neighbors, including Paul Lyons, who later shared it with Michael. Um, it may have been in whatever conversation Paul and Michael had that Michael was under the mistaken impression that the map came from a meeting of ours, but it did not. You know, right. uh, the uh, meeting to discuss water contamination issues, D 
did not happen here in this board. So I agree with you. He may be conflating that with something that Paul referred to in his conversation with him. Right. But the bottom line is that we didn't have a meeting. The Board of Health we didn't. did not happen. Right. Correct. Right. I'm just trying to figure out kind of why he would think these things. Or is he you thinking know? about the meeting you went to with DPH, or not DPH, but DEP, DEP. which we've already addressed in the earlier complaint. Yeah, I have to assume that it's, it's another meeting that he has in mind. To, or Yeah, he's thinking of a second meeting somewhere that he may yeah. be conf confusing with my neighborhood association meeting. Yeah, I think so. I wish he had just called the Board of Health and said, I want to know more about the PFAS program. I would have told him anything he wanted to know. Right. But he doesn't trust us. I know. Oh. Right. Um, but I, I, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, and I've asked, I put a note here for Donna, but Donna has not responded. Uh, I'm not sure how much we want to go into these questions of what was the meeting that he's thinking of, or if we just want to say we didn't have a meeting, period. I think we um, just didn't have a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We did. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Can we go on to number four? Mm -hmm. Are we ready? So in this one, the Board of Health failed to create accurate records of votes taken based on deliberations, identifying the data used to construct the map and make well water testing decisions. But I mean, this is kind of going back to number one again, we did not construct a map, we did not make well water testing decisions. And consequently, there weren't any votes or deliberations to be recorded. Yes? Right. Yeah. Any, any more on that? Yeah. Okay, the, another point under number four, we failed to provide a record of communications with DEP. True. Right. Oh, wait a minute. Where's that? Oh, I see. Well, um, failed to provide a record of communications with DEP. Are, are okay. we obliged to? I mean, we, we did. I. Uh, we did talk about the fact that you and I were going to meet with them, or at least I was initially, and you joined. And then we, uh, I, I did give a, um, we did give a summary of what that meeting was, and, but that was all in the Board of Health meeting. Right. Well, what he says about this, and this is kind of interesting with respect to our minutes, it says, it goes on and says, the only available relevant Board of Health minutes that address the instant issue is found in the March 8th minutes, PFAS contamination, Al will intend, attend a Zoom presentation March 12th, blah, blah. Um, and then later on, after, after you, we had the meeting, um, I put in the minutes that you summarized what we learned, but I didn't summarize it in the minutes. So that could have been better. It would have been more informative. Um, are, are you obliged to do, to summarize a, a meeting that is not a formal Board of Health meeting? I don't think so. It could have been, it would have been better if I had, but I don't think I am ob obligated to do it. Um, certainly the, some other boards use a much more, truncated um, uh, form for, for their minutes. And basically they just record um, the various votes. They tell almost nothing about their discussions or, or deliberations or anything else. They just say, you know, we voted four to three to do this or, or, or whatever. So I don't think there's any obligation to do that. Um, I did notice that one time I gave very detailed minutes and you all liked them a lot. And so I think that I should do that <laughs> all the time. We were trying but, to send you a message, Kat. But. Yeah, right. But uh, maybe it came after this. That would have been, it would have been a good idea to have that in there. On the other hand, you know, I mean, Michael went to Becky and he said the Board of Health is withholding information. And I think yeah. it's a little bit unfair to accuse somebody from, of withholding information when you haven't asked for it. 
as I said, I would have told him everything he wanted to know and maybe more. Yeah. It's also not our, it was not our project, our study, and it's not our information to share. Um, yeah. And so I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't seem like we are obligated to share the details of a meeting that we have uh, outside of the Board of Health. All right. Um, well, except that it should have been, the point is it should have been a public meeting because that's, that's the open meeting law. And that's what Donna told us when we met with her the other day. Okay. So, so to the extent that we did not post that meeting as an open public meeting, um, we, we were remiss. However, we did not do it with malice, with malicious intent to deceive or conceal. We did it out of ignorance. And our discussions of the presentation that you attended were part of a Zoom meeting, correct? Good point. Uh, wait, though, when, when was that? Yeah. Because if it was, if it was April 7th, that was the meeting that I screwed up. And so there was no recording. I mean, we were making a recording, but it, it, where, but we don't have it. it. It disappeared. Maybe I didn't tell you this. I got in touch with Grace the next day and I said, where would the recording be of the meeting that we had last night? And she said, this is going to be one of those cases where minutes are going to have to do it because the recording was just, we don't know, um, because I didn't. I didn't properly get on to the town Zoom meeting account. So. But if it wasn't that meeting, there, there would be a recorded. If it wasn't that meeting, there would be, but I think it must have been because, well, maybe not, maybe not. Um, oh, it's the meeting of March 17th. That should be. That should be on on. Uh, that should be recorded. And isn't that? And that should a, be available. And isn't that recording um, a matter of public record? Yes, it is. Anybody can get it by asking and the town clerk for it. Anyone can access that and learn the details of what was discussed in the meeting. That is absolutely true. And, and along that, the Board of Health did uh, put out public announcements about the program. Right. right. Right, I think you're right that we did. I mean, it's true we didn't post the meeting. On the other hand, we did give, we did give a record of it. Maybe not a, as complete as we might have, but we did get it out there. Right. So I guess that begs the question, how detailed do our minutes need to be? Are the minutes for the public or are the minutes for, for the board? And uh, especially if they're recorded, um, then, you know, uh, there's no way that minutes could be detailed enough to um, replace, um, you know, the recording of the meeting and the details that were discussed. Right. Except that right. non non pandemic times, all we have is the minutes. You know, in our ordinary meeting routines, there is no recording. Right. So minutes are it. Right. But we have to stay focused on. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that that's true, and we might, when we go back to face to face meetings, want to give more detail. Um, but again, we are not obligated to do that. I think our meeting, our meeting minutes are somewhat unusual in that we give a lot of information. So yeah, I think it's a good point that the details were available, 
We didn't make them particularly easy to get. You would have to get them from the town clerk and so on, but they were out there to be had. Well, I, th I think Garrett's point is well taken that we do have uh, public information messages twice that we put out there regarding the program. Right. So, right. You know, we might even want to include those as exhibits or, you know, possibly when we get to that discussion later. And, right. and I also think that there is a level of awareness within the community that uh, about, about accessing the recordings of board meetings. Right. Right. And again, we're, we're accessible and available and he could have asked. Okay. All right. Well, that, I think that really, um, that really shapes the answer to that one in a way that wasn't clear to me. Okay. okay. Are we ready to go on? Yes. All right. Now there was this last. There was this last little parting shot yeah. about about saying that Wim was going to run and that we were we were um, interfering in elections, um, which is, I mean, it was information. And by the way, Mr. Levine gave us that information at the meeting, which of course I didn't say. But um, giving information about who's running for the board is not interfering. That is not an open meeting law um, matter, as far as I can tell, and I think that's why it's not numbered. I don't know if we should respond or not. Sense of the meeting? I don't think it's an open meeting law issue. Okay. I agree. Okay. So we won't respond to that. All right. Now you've got this document in front of you, right? What? So mm -hmm. I have a sort oh. of, I have a sort of um, summing up for the jury here. The Board of Health acknowledges um, that we've been less than diligent. We maintain that any violations were the result of carelessness or ignorant. We're not committed with malice or intent to deceive or to conceal information. Some confusion resulted, um, uh, naturally gives rise to su suspicion. It was an honest mistake. Do you like this or do you want me to change it? Do you have suggestions? Um, I, I have one, Kat. Yes. I, I don't particularly like carelessness or ignorance. I like lack of detailed recollection of the section of the open meeting laws, something of that sort. I'm sorry, what document? I, I thought we were referring to this first draft that you circulated with the yes, teal, teal and it's, colored highlights, right? That's right, that's right. That now, right? if you go to the last page near the bottom, it starts, there's a paragraph that starts the oh, Board of I Health see. Got it. Okay. okay, thank you. That, okay, got it. I'm dealing with that paragraph. All right, thanks. Um, um, so in the, uh, yes, in that first, paragraph uh i think it's so the second full sentence i don't like carelessness or ignorance right i would i you know what i came up with lack of detailed recollection of this section of the open meeting laws or something to that you know i don't think we can be expected to have a detailed recollection of every part of the open meetings law well um I think I could put it in a way that makes us look less bad, but I mean, really, we've just been we've just been sloppy about the open meeting law, and I know that every one of us has has been thinking about um, about the need for discretion to try to protect people's privacy, but I don't think we have been thinking enough. I know I, know I haven't about the business of um, not deliberating. Um, I agree with that. But I don't but I don't think any of us has intentionally been 
careless or ignorant and i think nobody's many... intentionally ignorant right, right. or but, really yeah. intentionally careless i will try to find a way that sounds more tactful that says something similar and we'll right and we'll work we'll work it out next time sounds um, good uh, right i because i think that what you're you're saying is kind of uh, that, I, that's that's not working for me but right, i think exactly. we can come up with something we'll like let me um see sort of like there they were errors of omission um not of commission <laughs> but not that's that's not the word thing but yeah i, I see know, what you mean errors yeah of omission. right that well i mean really or, the point is we didn't do it on purpose right yeah right they were mistakes they were mistakes mistakes i like it yeah i like yeah. it but but also but also, I mean, for example, the business about about posting that meeting with DEP, we didn't know, but we've mm -hmm. already said that, mm -hmm. so we don't really have to do that. So why don't we just say the result of the mistakes and we're not committed with malice or any other thing, right? Or with any intent to um, withhold information, right? As you've said that. in your draft. Right. Yeah. Right. So the rest of it, the rest of this paragraph is about Arlene mistakenly, there's another mistake, um, saying that we hadn't had any input and that you weren't present. So how, I'm actually only enough? find I'm only finding out tonight that there was any input at all. Oh wow! That on wow. the board's part. You are to that really night. late to the party. Here. I did not know that. Okay. 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 Well, there's something I want to say about that after we finish this because I have some some thoughts about about our communication both among ourselves and with the public mm -hmm. that um, that we'll we'll get back to. Mm -hmm. So, um, so one of the things in the in the complaint is we're asked to say what remedial action we'll take, and you know we're going to watch the videos, we're going to study the open meeting law. Um, Donna said something about limiting access to the Board of Health account, but that seems to me to be not important because basically it is limited just to you and me, Arlene. Um, um, we'll have a, a, a disclaimer that the content is for information and that we shouldn't be discussing it. And um, maybe we'll add some stuff after we talk about actually I, what we want to do. May Please. I go back to the, um, if, so I, the only reason I need access to Board of Health email is so that I can conduct in this day and age, the isolation and quarantine work from an official address account. I do not want to be conducting, I, I, when I send people guidance on isolation and quarantine, it needs to be from an official account. Ab but, absolutely, and that's fine. And I know that that's the only thing you do. On but the if they want to give me, if they want to give me another town account that's separate from the board's no, that isn't that isn't necessary. Okay. That isn't necessary. Right. But the idea is is that the whole board doesn't just randomly get on there and and uh, send messages. Okay. Right. You have a, a particular brief that you do, and you need to use the, the board of health email for it, and that's fine. Okay. I asked them at one point if they would give us individual accounts the way the select board has but they said they couldn't do it they're okay. they're not enough accounts to go around got it so with respect to this response are we are we good for as you know basically the concept is there anything that we haven't said i i think so um I I guess I would want to hear if Donna is okay with us not addressing all the other stuff that was brought up. Just, just confirm that. Uh, okay, I will confirm it. Donna's, um, Donna's um, approach was, she said, you have to just be very factual 
you know, and contest this on the facts, that he doesn't have the facts right. So all the stuff that's kind of uh, peripheral to the open meeting law, I think she's going to say that we can leave it out, but I will certainly consult her on that. Um, and then, of course, we get, you know, when we get to the what actions do you want the, the board to take, um, really, after the first um, sentence, um, it's not, it's, it's nothing to do with the open meeting law, I think. You know, and as, we, as it goes on, it gets farther and farther from what the open meeting law is, is designed to to uh, protect. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I can just imagine uh, Mr. Hootstein getting this letter uh, and being very unsatisfied. Well, I can, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that and I, and I understand that and I hope that maybe we can, we can make it a little less unsatisfactory. But the fact is, it was his choice to squeeze this into an open meeting law complaint where it doesn't really fit. Right. Right. I mean, there's that's part of it. But I mean, he's we've got everything in here and uh, and the open meeting law does not address this stuff. Um, that I, I think that's really accurate ahead. that yeah. uh, that puts it well, Kat, that he squeezed a lot of stuff into an open open meeting law complaint. Right. Right. Yeah. And and uh, and, you know, he can put in whatever he wants, but I think we only should we only have to and we only should, I think, address the things that are uh, that are germane to the open meeting law. Okay. Um, however, it seems to me that it would not be inappropriate to end this letter um, apologizing for the insult that he received. I mean, I know that Al apologized, um, mm -hmm. but it does not seem to me to be inappropriate for the board to apologize as a board mm -hmm. because insulting members of the public is not the kind of values that we, that we respect and that we want to have as a model for our interactions with the public. And Al, I'm not saying this because I think you have horrible values. I mean, you just, you know, everybody, everybody <laughs> snaps once in a while. I'm not <laughs> being critical. Um, who doesn't? No, I, I, I've done I, it I myself. Agree. I agree completely. I, I, I think it is important for the board to make it a clear statement that, mm -hmm. that uh, this, is, um, this was unfortunate and uh, inappropriate or whatever wording you want to, to use, um, regrettable, um, whatever, whatever sounds, sounds good. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we may be done with what we can do with that tonight. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have more thoughts, save them for May 5th. And I will, I will try to write a draft of this letter and send it out well in advance of May 5th so you can really think it over and have suggestions ready for the meeting. Please do not send me any of your suggestions by email. Okay. okay. And um, I, I, I did like the um, suggestions that you did convey to us. Um, on the, the one called e OM, OML compliance? Yes, like one okay. way, one way uh, information, just reply received, or I'm having trouble opening the document, but right. You not... forgot to add, put the addition on it, yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Okay, so we'll have basically one way information. Um, okay. And let's just be really by the book as much as we can. Um, while, and I will take it upon myself to learn more about the law and see what we can and we can't do. There may be more than we think, but, um, but until we know that, let's be really, really yeah. circ circumspect. Sure. In, in particular, Kat, I'd be interested in what we can do when we're not meeting if, we're, if there's a need to construct a public message. So throughout COVID, yeah. throughout COVID, uh, we've had a need to construct public messaging, and yeah. if that needs to be done in a in a public meeting amongst the board members versus um, 
you know, can, can there be like a shared Google document that we're all working from to, to create a message if we need to get information out about, you know, uh, vaccination or. Right. Well, that's my concern also that so much of what we do is not about making decisions that affect, that affect, you know, a well or a septic system or a, a, an inspection or something like that, but that are informational in nature. And I'm, I'm hoping that there is some leeway for us to work on a thing like that so that I have, I have valuable input from other board members when those things go out. Because if, as you've probably noticed, when I do it on my own, I'm constantly sending out corrections afterwards. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not always that sloppy, but recently, you know, we're all kind of getting worn down. Um, so that's the thing that I'm going to try to find out about. It may be that um, that we would have to have to have a maybe a, a small subcommittee or something, and that that might work. But also, we can find out. I think Mary. Has Mar a question. Mary, you have a question. Just, just, if you don't mind, I'd do a comment. The, the, in the select board meeting the other day, there was a huge discussion about open meeting laws. You know, oh. they're, they are definitely not as understood by everybody. They're very complex. And one, Grace seems very knowledgeable and she actually had a suggestion for a, um, a website or an online education program that she had taken that explains it a little bit more. So she might have some in that information for you. Um, the other question and the re reason they were doing it had to do with subgroups. And if you're going to make a subgroup you, to work on business, that has to be posted as a meeting. You can't make a smaller subgroup of members um, to be able to do that. Because that was part of their, they had to do with the police commission and there was a group of people that wanted to work on things outside, but that's another one of the things that aren't okay. To so, do. so that's, that's interesting. When it's about business, it's not permissible. But perhaps when it's not about business, when it's about public messaging, it and might be permissible. And that's, the, that's a very good question. Yeah. Because I'm a, I still have a question just listening as the outsider about the, whether or not you were obligated to post this meeting that wasn't your meeting and wasn't set up to be your meeting, should not that have been their obligation to post that if they were going to do it? That's a little bit, that's still a little mm. iffy for me after listening to all the conversations here. And like I said, they had a huge conversation about it at the select board the other day that I was just sitting in on the call. Oh. Gosh, maybe we should, maybe I should watch the video. Um, when when was this meeting, Mary? So the select board meeting, I think. Yeah, my days are all mixed up. Was that Tuesday? They're usually Tuesdays. Yeah, I think that was just Tuesday. Tuesday of this week. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, see. I'll. And I'll a lot see. of their information they lean on Grace for. She seems to be the one that has. A really yeah, she seems she there. seems to have really acquired all that really quick. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I don't, I don't want to derail us, um, but, you know, as okay. we're talking, I'm starting to think about, you know, what happens when we want to get together on a Saturday to do a setup drill, right? Is it, since we're deliberating about how to set up the tents and where the tables are going to go, is this uh, formally a meeting that needs to be posted? Well, we'll have to check on that. Um... It's my understanding that if we have something like a site visit, which that could in a way be construed as a site visit, that we don't have to post that, even if we have a quorum, even if the entire board shows up for it. But it's a good question, and uh, I will see what I can find out. Or even, Kat, like when we went to um, that woman's house to talk about the placement of her new well, um, that was a site visit. A site visit we don't have to post. I know, but we, we did a lot of deliberation. We did a lot of sort of thinking through and, and considering and, and uh, we could do this or we could do that. And uh, are we going to insist that they, uh, they cap and close that old well? 
um, there was a lot of deliberation. And so um, maybe you're right, maybe just a site visit just falls outside of the, the open meeting sort of business. But. Well, we did go then and report on it to the rest of the board. That's true. Right, and the board agreed with our, with our conclusions. Um, possibly, possibly we should have waited to, to say that it, this site was suitable. I really don't know. Yeah, yeah. Feel a bit like um, like our hands get tied a bit when we're tr just trying to get something done. Yeah. Well, and earlier I think that was my whole point about having a complete understanding of the open meetings law. It's you know, it's pretty tough for anyone to have that complete understanding. Yeah. Yeah, but if you know, if we know that there are particular things we're interested yeah, in, maybe exactly. we can narrow it down. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And I'll see what I can find out for us. So, so back to this OML compliance suggestion. I had two, I had another suggestion about our communications with the public, which is send it all to me. I would be happy to respond to all queries and just kind of centralize everything. And if I get it wrong, I'll take the rap. Um, but usually I don't because I check with, you know, whoever knows and I kind of know just because of being the clerk on the board, I kind of know what's going on. Um, so, you know, unless you feel particularly qualified to do it, but it seems to me that, I mean, back in the 90s, it was different. We didn't have a phone and we didn't have an email account um, back when Arlene and I started on the board. Um, board members shouldn't have to have members of the public calling them at home. I don't think that's right. I think that's above and beyond. Um, and I think that if you, if you get a call um, and you prefer, and maybe even it should be mandatory, that you forward it to the Board of Health phone and let the person know, or you don't have to, I mean, if, if I get it, I'll answer it or I'll respond to it in some way. Um, but I would like to have us adopt a, uh, a rule, I guess, um, uh, saying that, that um, Board of Health members don't take calls at home. What do you think about that? Is that too draconian? Calls or emails that we shouldn't respond to emails either. We should emails follow. on your personal email that come from members of the public. Uh -huh. So then follow. that would be easy to forward to the Board of Health. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I, 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 I welcome that. I mean, I've spent hours on the phone with Mr. Hootstein uh, in past years. And oh, uh, lucky. Yeah. So um so that would uh, simplify that whole situation uh -huh. is that something that the board would be prepared to vote on can i have some other other thoughts is there any are there any objections Do people have, to have a contrary opinion that we should hear. You know, so I was just so, looking at the Board of Health webpage and, you know, it lists us all out as members. It lists uh, the Board of Health email address and the uh, 2122 phone number. Uh -huh. And there's hyperlinks. Well, yeah, That's there's hyperlinks to our names, but if you click on that, it, um, you know, it doesn't provide our personal contact information. Right, this most right. recent incident of a call coming to me at home is because uh, he has our phone number and we're in the book. Our, our right. landline phone number is, you know, in old Listed. phone books, it hasn't changed. Right. Um, 
So I would, I myself would be in favor of that. I would have to learn how to forward a voicemail, but I can do that. <laughs> um, well, and also you could, um, you could um, just put an out, you know, add to your outgoing message. I'm not going to listen to your email, your message yeah. if it's for the Board of Health. I, I don't want that going to everybody though. But yeah, okay, uh, it's po it's possible. I could do that, right? Um, sometimes okay. you don't know that that's what a person's calling about until you've already answered the phone. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and in that case, you can say, um, we have a rule on the Board of Health. I can't take this call. Yes, exactly. So pl please hang up and call the Board of Health number. And yeah. um, may I ask you, Kat, how often is the Board of Health voicemail checked? Well, it's a little um, it's a little erratic because I tend to forget it a little bit, but I try I try to check it daily and it might go several mm -hmm. days when I forget and then and um, I could certainly, I could certainly just make it a practice to do it at a certain time every day so that it will become a habit. Okay. Couldn't we hire uh, somebody like uh, somebody retired like Cliff Reed or something like that to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to sort of be our uh, communications um, He's, czar he, or something? I hear some hollering coming from downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay well can we come back to this can i could it would somebody um um make a motion to adopt a rule that board of health members not take or respond to um messages on their personal phone or email uh i would i would second that we haven't, haven't moved it yet Oh, sorry. Oops. I was asking for a. I was asking I for a motion for that. Oh, I see. Uh, I so moved. Can we have a second? I, I will second that if you can so move something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can we have a vote? Um, Noreen. Yes. Arlene. Yes, please. Garrett. Yes. Al. Absolutely yes. And I, and I make five, and so it's unanimous. Thank you very much. OK. Is there anything else that should come before us at this meeting? No. I'm just thinking if there's, a, it seems like what we're doing is, is uh, sort of saying that we need to be more open and more transparent and, and those sorts mm -hmm. of things. Um, and, but that also gets me thinking that there are times when we need to be discreet with regard to some of the things that we're talking about, whether it be um, individuals' property or mm -hmm. individual situations. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and, and the COVID, the COVID stuff, it, it seems like to me, might be something. So mm -hmm. what does this mean then, that we have to go into executive session, uh, stop recording temporarily? Can we do that? Is that OK? No, it's not OK. There are very limited, um, I'll find them um, if I can. I'm sure I can get them from Grace. There are 10 reasons, I think, that you can go into executive session. And when you do that, you have to take a vote and say, we're gonna go into executive session for reason number eight, and everybody votes to do that, and then, and then they, they stop the recording. But it's very, it's very circumscribed. You can't really do it very often. And that's why often when we're, um, when we're on Zoom, we, we talk about you know, a certain person or a resident or some, a, a patient or whatever, so that we can try to protect people's privacy. And it, of course, it's more of a problem now because when we used to meet face to face in town hall, there was usually nobody else there. And that's one reason that I think that we've been so cavalier about things is that we're just not used to having anybody listening to us. I mean, it's been very gratifying that people are asking for our advice. And actually some people have, have listened to our meetings. 
Is anyone else concerned about, about uh, how to properly have our discussions about sensitive issues? Garrett, you must deal with some of this stuff, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, cer certainly around health, health and information, I think we have to uh, be cautious, uh, particularly in such a small community. Um, well, that, that and, is, I believe, one of the reasons for executive session, but we have never really had to talk about people's personal health issues, have we? I mean, that just doesn't really come up for us. Yeah, you know, not, not that I'm aware of. We yeah. haven't, but... Would because we have up? we have Arlene and she she kind of takes care of all that and she deals with that as right. you know in, in with discretion. Although there are times when I might need then to report back to you all mm -hmm. about I I I haven't yet. I mean it's not as though giving people guidance about public health issues requires a vote from the board. Right, or, right. No, you don't, yeah. you don't need to, you need or to just any to do that. action on the part of the board. Right. 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 In the same way that I'm constantly giving people information, people are always calling and emailing for information about all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. We don't have to, you know, that's not an action. It's just, it's just our, our job. Giving them information. Right. Right. Yeah. That is an interesting question. I don't know that um, anything that sensitive has ever really come up. I mean, we've tried to be, you know, to avoid mentioning names or addresses, or whatever, just out of politeness. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to think now too. I, I you know, I don't know. Would would uh, applications for green burials or something like that? Um, is that sensitive? Is that something that uh, shouldn't be a part of the public record, you know, on a Zoom call or on uh, in our minutes? Um, I don't, I don't think so. The only time, by the way, we would get an application for that is if somebody wanted to create um, a, a, a family cemetery, right? Otherwise, they just go to the cemetery commission. Mm -hmm. um, but, and just for that reason, if somebody wants to create a family cemetery on their property, that's kind of, that should be public record, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe I, maybe I, I retract what I, what the concerns that I raised. It just seems like, like we could, if we're not careful, we could stumble into a situation that might not be so good. But. Well, yeah, I, I agree with you. And it, does, it makes me a little uneasy too that, that, um, that we have to be, we just have to be really careful as you say. And so one board member like Arlene meeting with uh, Jackie about the COVID situation is, um, is not considered a an open doesn't fall fall under the open meeting laws because it's just one board member. Is that right? It it doesn't fall under the open meeting laws for us. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, if some other entity like the school or the the school union or anybody else if if they're supposed to post it. But um, I would think that if it has you know when it has to do with health. I would think that it, it wouldn't count. That's, that's a pretty good question. I don't know the answer. I think another good one would be two board members going to a FRCOG meeting. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting point. Yeah. I, you know, I, don't, I don't know if they post their meetings as public meetings. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. You know, Maybe I should know the answer to too. that, but yeah. They, or they for that matter, if Kat would have been in the meeting with Arlene and Jackie, that would have triggered it to be a board meeting because there are two board members discussing and deliberating. I guess it would have. And that just seems wrong to me. Yeah, me too. Hmm. 
term? Well, these are all things that we need to find out. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for the next exciting episode. Okay, you have any other difficult questions to ask, Al? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I've been difficult enough for one month. <laughs> You have been one pain in the butt. <laughs> you're not gonna, but we, but we love you anyway. <laughs> you're not going to miss me when I'm gone. <laughs> I don't know. You give us a lot of comic relief. <laughs> okay. What do you say we adjourn? Sounds good to me. Sounds good. Okay. So moved. All right, second. So it's 8.40 and we're throwing in the towel. Okay, All be right. well, you guys. All right. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Be well.